everybody, it's me, Lucy Hernandez, and before I get started with this video, I want to apologize. Um, last time I made an update about making a, a video about Tricky Claw Syndrome, it was like almost a year ago. Um, I stopped making the video or updating about anything because I got so stressed. I actually literally stressed myself out about it. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and I saw how beautiful and how perfect they were and that's how I wanted to make my videos and I don't have all the equipment to do that and I realized that nothing, well I've come to realize that nothing, people, nothing is perfect, nothing's going to be perfect, nothing is going to be exactly the way you want it to turn out and it took me a long time to realize that, you know, I almost forgot, you know, why I chose to do this in the first place, which was to help people and families with Tricia Collins Syndrome. And that's what I still would love to do. I still have that in my heart to help people and to make a video for you guys. And again, I'm very sorry it took me such a long time to make this. And... I'm very excited that I am now back on track, and I do hope some of y'all can forgive me for taking such a long time to to do this, because <laughs> I love you guys very much, and I didn't want to disappoint anybody, and I think I really did disappoint some of you guys by taking so long, and I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I'll stop saying sorry so much. <laughs> I know in my last video I said it to like, um, almost 20 times, 18 I counted, <laughs> me and a friend counted how many times I said that word. Okay, so <laughs> let's get started, shall we? <laughs> okay, um, so, I guess the question a lot of people are asking, um, uh, how did I or my child or person you love, or you know, get Trisha Collins Syndrome, otherwise known as, quote, TCS. Well, Trichy Claw Syndrome, TCS, can be passed down to a child through a parent who carries the Trichy Collins gene. Um, my parents don't have Trichy Collins. Um, I'm first generation. That I believe, you know, that God bless me with. <laughs> and if one parent has, or, but if your parent or parents, if you do have Trichy Collins Syndrome, if one parent has TCS, the child has a 50-50 chance of showing characteristics of the syndrome. So when, I, I do want children still, when um, you have a kid, um, or you decide to have one, um, the child has 50-50% chances of, well she still carries, he or she still carries the trait, I believe. But, um, they have 50-50 chances of the gene showing up. And, however, even if the child doesn't show any features of the syndrome, he or she can be a carrier of the TCS gene and pass it down through generations if they have children themselves. And I think I, I think I explained that earlier just a second ago. <laughs> um, okay. What is Trisha Collins Syndrome? Okay. Trichy Collins Syndrome is a condition that affects the development of the bone structure and tissue of the face and jaw. Here, I'll show you a picture that I have on my computer. Sorry, um, my room's, my room's a little messy, so. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see it. Um, Trichy Collins Syndrome is a condition that affects the development of the bone structure and the tissue of the jaw and face. So, basically, I think we all have a narrow forehead. Uh, we don't have much of a jaw, um, we don't, when some of us are born with just a little earlobe or nothing at all, or we, I think we might have an ear, but the, the, the ear canal isn't open. See, this is what mine looked like. Uh, Dr. Sharon worked on my ears. All I used to have was just this little piece right here. And then he, um, with... Here, I'm going to show you my scars. Um, with taking parts of my ribs, here I'll show you here. 
Oh no, that's from a Q-Tube button. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Here it is, yeah. It's right next to the scar. And he took both of my ribs out. Or pieces of my ribs. And he made, like my rib, this is my rib right in here, right here, my ear. And he made my ears for me. And I think they carved out to make it look like an ear. I don't actually have ear canals. But um, I'm thinking of having surgery to actually have them make it look like I have deeper ear canals. I'm still deciding. And, oh yes, and the skin graft, the skin they used to make this came from, <laughs> came from my butt. <laughs> Sorry, I know. Um, or my hiney, or booty, whichever you like to call it. <laughs> I sometimes like to say booty instead of hiney, I don't know. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> okay. Okay. How is Trisha Collins syndrome formed? Currently, no one knows what causes the condition to occur. In over 60% of the cases, both the mother and the father of a child born with TCS have normal genes. And the mother does everything, well, the mother usually does everything right during her pregnancy. I guess what I mean everything is, you know, oh, I've never been pregnant, but, you know, like my mom, you know, she carried me. She had a sister. I have an older sister. And, you know, everything went normal with that, you know. She did what the doctors told her to do, you know, she took medicine and everything. You know, they did everything right during the pregnancy. And, um... I'm not sure, probably back then, I don't think, um, don't quote me on this, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think back then, you know the sonogram where they have a picture, you go to a doctor and have a picture, and they put like, um, like a little, like a little, uh, remote or something on the belly, and you get an image of the baby. I don't think back then you were able to tell by the pictures if your child had TCS or not. I think today it's much better, and I think you can tell today, because it's more known, I think, today. But, um, the process of bringing genes together from a mother and a father is not at all that simple to explain. Once in a while, a king can be changed in the process. Okay. What are the chances of someone having TCS? Um, just because T this TCS gene has been identified, it is sometimes called the... Okay, this is a real tongue twister for me. The treacle gene... Excuse me, hiccup. <laughs> this gene is located on chromosome 5Q. The chances of a person or child being born with Turkey Collins syndrome are about 1 in 10,000 births. Yeah, let me show you the screen. So, just in case I said it wrong, some of y'all can read it. <laughs> it's right here. This gene has been identified and is sometimes called the treacle gene. I hope I said that right. This gene is located on chromosome 5Q. The chances of a person or a child being born with TCS are about 1 in 10,000 births. <laughs> Man, I have crazy hair. <laughs> I think I still have crazy hair. <laughs> okay. Next. This next? Yeah, I think so. Okay. How severe is TCS? Okay. I think a lot of people uh, have asked this question to me before. Um, and what I found out was Trisha Collins syndrome presents with different levels of severities. Sometimes the syndrome is so mild you can't even tell if that person has, uh, or child has Trisha Collins syndrome. And, uh, other times it could be quite severe and the person or a child has to go through many surgeries in order to help them live more comfortable lives. If mild and not life-threatening, the person may never feel they want to or need the surgeries because they feel comfortable in their appearance, which is cool, you know. And there's nothing wrong, you know, if you want to have surgeries. Um, if you don't need it, um, I think most of us that are born with tissue call syndrome, uh, we do go through uh, a couple of surgeries. I think I had 
18. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to guess 18, almost 20. And I'm going to be having more soon, so I'll probably... A total amount of searches I think I'll have will probably be 23, 24, maybe. Um, uh, those are by my choice, but uh, it's okay, you know, if you want to get cheekbones, bones, like that's what I want to get. I want, um, I want to get cheekbones bones and my cheeks look kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, I guess they could look puffier or... <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm definitely about to get my jaw um, moved forward um, by a, doc a doctor named Dr. Payne. And uh, I'm going through a long process, which I am in the middle of it right now. Um, I had uh, recently got all my teeth cleaned and cavities. They're a little bit of stain. Doctor says I have a little staining here, but. Um, I have gotten my wisdom teeth out, <laughs> which is a really hard, uh, which is a really um, scary process for me because a lot of dentists or orthodontists, I think, didn't want to do it because it was really, really risky. And I finally found a doctor, I forgot his name, I think it's Dr. Metz here in Houston. And um, he uh, got my wisdom teeth out, and they thought I had four, but I only had three. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now I am in the process of getting my jaw, you know, move forward, and I am hoping to take y'all through the steps, like, we don't videotape, uh, everything that happens so that y'all can, you know, get, like, a better look in on what happens when someone's going to get their jaw move forward. So this is what mine looks like right now. You can't really tell a face profile, like, here, here, so I'm going to show you, like, on my side, what it looks like. So basically what they're going to do is just move this forward, and I have to get braces to do that. I think, I think everyone has to get braces when, uh, to get their jaw move forward. I think so, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Next. Oh, I'm not finished with what I was saying earlier. Um, it is com I believe it's completely all right, you know, to get surgeries, to know, to, you know, if it makes you happy, if you want to, that's cool, you know, get the surgeries you want, you know, if you want cheekbones or you want an eye lift or, you know, um, and you want to get ears, you know, do it, you know, um, I've been wanting it and, you know, I would you know, <laughs> my parents and their friends, you know, they always give me compliments. They always tell me how cute and pretty I am. And not that I don't believe them, but it's, you know, what I want to do. You know, for me, not for anybody else, you know. Um, I think it's very important to, you know, find out, you know, who you want to be and, like, you know, who you are. And, you know, how do you want to present yourself. I think that's very important. And, um... That was a difficult thing for me to find out, especially through junior, uh, el not elementary so much, but once I hit like sixth grade, I realized, you know, um, I think it's everyone goes through it in sixth through like even throughout high school, find out, you know, who they are. And, um, you know, um, <laughs> I don't know if I could find the right, right words, you know. <laughs> But, you know, just be happy, I guess, you know, who you are, and, um, you know, explore yourself, you know, like, um, how do I put it? I mean, I'm not saying, you know, like, uh, you look cute, <laughs> cute, 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 I don't want to say the wrong thing, um, but, you know, definitely love who you are, you know, that's, um, one of the many things that I found difficult doing was loving myself. Um, I don't think I really hated myself in a way, but, you know, I really didn't like my appearances, and I always hated my face like this in school. My face, actually, my hair was shorter, it was like to here. My face was literally like this all the time. 
and it even gave me a nickname in high school, I think. I think it was called, uh, a friend told me that I was called, a uh, Half Face. Whoever came up with that, <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, too, uh, Half Face. Mainly because, uh, you know, I had half a face, and I also covered my head, like, my face. <laughs> like this all the time. <laughs> But as I um, start to, you know, find who I was and uh, started loving myself for me and the way that God created me, and that was a big help for my family, knowing that, telling me this is the way God created me, that I have a purpose, you know. He made me and all of us at Tricky Clown Syndrome, you know, for a reason and for a beautiful reason, of course, for a very beautiful reason. And, um... Once I started realizing that and, you know, believing that, I started to, you know, move my hair back a little bit, starting wearing makeup, um, smiling more. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, it definitely, a lot of people, even adults today, have a hard time trying to find out how to love themselves. And you know what? Um... And I'm, I'm still am trying a little bit, even though I've come a long way. Um, you know, it's something that you have to do for yourself. It takes a long process and, you know, do whatever you have to do, um, whether it's reading the Bible or, uh, you know, maybe finding a hobby or, you know, just hanging out with good people, you know, good influences, you know. Um... I'm not sure, but I guess the way I found out how to love myself was, you know, was definitely for me was through, uh, through God and Jesus and, you know, saying how much, you know, they loved me, you know, and that was one of the ways I found out how to love myself, but, uh, anywho, um, so, <laughs> on to the next one, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see. What are the features of Trisha Collins Syndrome? So, many should tell if we have, or loved one has, or child has Trisha Collins Syndrome. We will have uh, a narrow forehead, uh, eyes that tilt downwards, I think people's eyes are like, like a little more upwards. <laughs> but yeah, we have eyes that tilt downwards. Um, absence eyelashes on the lower eyelid. I have none over here, mainly because they have a scar. And uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later. I have a little bit, not much, and barely nothing. To be honest, I normally, um, pluck these out with the tweezers because they're kind of annoying um but I stopped recently I gave up because they always grew back I have since I've done that actually uh I've gotten little like little white ones they're really tiny and I don't even think you can see it on the camera but they just uh they've been growing a little bit here but um pretty much don't have any uh thin skin overlaying absent cheekbones, which I think it's right here. Oh, yeah, it definitely. I mean, I think if anyone felt their face, they could feel their cheekbones, but, um, absent ears or malformed ears. Like here. I'll show you a picture. Here, uh, I don't think you can see it. Oh, get rid of the bubbles. Here, I don't think you can see this. I think it's even better. That's basically all I had. It's just a little, little flap right here. That was it. A cleft palate, which is uh, up here, usually, I think, uh, just a, a big opening in the roof of your mouth. I, I can't open my mouth, I can't open my mouth wide enough to show you guys, but, uh, I had my cleft palate taken care of, I think, in 2005, uh, by Dr. Fearon. And we also have a small lower jaw. <laughs> Can myself, a loved one, or my child live normal lives? 
and answer this is yes, yes, yes. We can definitely um, live nor like normal lives. Um, fear no more. Tissue costume does not doesn't affect the mental status. Only the tissue and bones in the face. But being that tissue costume does affect the face, will have trouble with school with speech, eating. Hearing and sometimes seeing too. Um, people with TCS will have to grow up with more challenges to face than other people. Uh, well, not that there's other people who have other people have challenges too, but um, anyone with the a deformity that people can easily see on their bodies, you know, will all have challenges. So. I'm not saying that it's just us that have challenges. Lots of people have challenges to face that we are given, which I believe those challenges can make us feel two different ways, um, and we can choose. We can either learn from it and grow from it, or we can let it, you know, in my opinion, we can let it, like, you know, depress us and bring us down. And that was, of course, for everybody, something that... We have to go through and, you know, learn how to live and deal with our challenges. Um, and some other things that there's such people with TCS will have to grow up with more challenges to face than other people. And such as, okay, what I was talking about earlier was like, you know, like going out in public and stuff like that. but. The other things are such as feeding through a key tube until old and strong enough to eat by mouth or having to breathe through a trach until doctors say, okay, take it out. Sometimes even having to leave it in for the rest of our lives. But that's okay because we are still, we're still able to live out our lives, work hard, live out our dreams like everybody else. And this is true. Did I have two of those? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But like I said, even though we have more challenges to face than some kids or people, such as going through many surgeries and recoveries, scheduling doctor's appointments, having nurses by our side, we all still do normal things, like learning how to ride a bike, a horse, skateboard, or a scooter. Playing soccer, basketball, baseball, football, dance, swimming. Going to school to learn how to read, write, speak, math, and socializing, making friends. Some of us even get to use sign language and speak. Some of us to speak to others, which I think that is so cool. I did used to learn how to do a sign language when I was like hmm, five to ten years old, but I dropped it um, because. I was using my hearing aids more, which at the moment I do not have. My hearing aids broke, so <laughs> I've been deaf for almost over a month. I'll explain that in just a minute. But um, I think it's really cool for you to use people who use sign language. I think you'll have like your own little secret code and stuff. I think it's awesome. <laughs> like I still actually I want to learn how to, uh, to use sign language. You know, I think it's really awesome that y'all some of us can use it. Uh, pictures, oh, this is just a, a picture of me with one of my nurses, his name was, uh, David, he, him and his wife, uh, took care of me and my little sister, my uh, little sister, me and my big sister. <sighs> okay, this, I actually, uh, I had this question for a long time. I have a child with Tricia syndrome. Will my next child have Tricia Carlson syndrome? And this actually confused me as a kid because when Allie was born, my little sister, I actually thought he would have Tricia Carlson syndrome as well. Or he or she. I, I wanted a baby brother. But God bless you with the sister. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> I love you, Allie. Um, if you're concerned or wondering if you have one child or twins with TCS, Will my next child also have TCS? It's not likely for you to have another child with TCS. Those chances are very slim to none. Very slim to none. Um, uh, 
I had this question. I've asked my mom multiple times, probably like six to eight times. At the most, um, wondering why did Allie not have it? And when I was little, she explained it to me in a way that I could understand it. And, um, but now when I grew older, she told me, like, genetic-wise how, uh, I, I, only I had it and, um, how, um, my baby sister didn't have it. And I don't remember her exact words, but, um, I can ask her again and I'll do another video next time and see what she says about it. Okay, uh, thank you, you came to the end of my video. I want to thank everybody who supported me in making this video. I honestly couldn't have done it without y'all's love and support. And a big thank you to Dr. Fion. A lot of this information is based off the website, website I got from his webpage. I will leave you a link below if you wish to check it out. And I will. Um, I'll go in, find the website I used to make this video. Well, to get the information from it. And I will let y'all visit his website. Here, who, here's Dr. Dr. Fira. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you guys for making it to the end of my video. Um, again, I'm sorry it took me such a long time to make it. Um, I'm going to update this to Facebook first and then try to get it to YouTube so that more of y'all can watch it on there. Um, silly kitty, I had my cats with me. <laughs> um, but yes, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, again, I'll say it one more time. I'm very sorry it took me almost a year to make this video. Um, uh... It took me a long time to realize that not everything in life can be perfect, you know. And I actually had help realizing this through two of my friends. Uh, one of them is a very good friend of mine. I love her so much. Um, and uh, I think she knows who she is. I won't, um, I won't give her, a, I won't give out her name just in case. But just in case she doesn't want me to give it out. Um, and another friend of mine, uh, he has, uh, also helped me out a lot, too. And, um, I want to thank you guys. And also, my mom and my mom, my mom and my sisters, they've helped me out as well. Um, <laughs> and also to, you know, my aunts, my uncles, my grandparents. <laughs> um, so, my next video I want to do is about uh, hearing aids, because a lot of us do need hearing aids, and, oh, um, or Bajas. Uh, right now, I don't have my hearing aids. Um, <laughs> mine broke! <laughs> it sounded like just what, that was it. Um, a couple of days where it broke, I had, like, some static to it. I couldn't hear, like, barely anything. Um... But, uh, I'm actually going to a doctor's office in Dallas, I think, uh, in about four to five days to maybe get a loaner and find out, um, when I can get, uh, a new hearing aid. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, thank you again for watching my video. I love you guys so much, and... I promise I will try to make another video soon for you guys. Bye!